Back again with another video and today I'm looking at a lens that was sent in via TT Artisan. I'll do a quick unboxing and then I'll do some tests later on. You do get an ND1000 filter with this particular kit. On the screen I've put some of the basic specifications. A couple of points to note, your minimum aperture is only f11 on this lens. Do know if you're using it on the Micro Four Thirds, your angle of view is going to be down a bit due to the crop factor. Good build quality on the lens. Everything is metal on this. That includes the body and the lens cap. Give you a quick close up shot now on the aperture ring. And this has click stops and they are quite firm. So you can easily feel where they are. And if I turn the lens over, you'll see you have the groove patterns going all the way along. So it's fairly easy to get a grip on that. With the focus ring that is dampened, so it does have quite a smooth action. Would have liked to have had a bit more resistance on that though. Make it a little bit harder to turn. I'll move on to the lens cap now. This is also metal, quite nice finishing, and you can see shining a torch on the inside, you have the felt lining, and that's what gives it the grip on the top of the lens. There's also a thread built into this so you can unscrew the middle part and take that off. The reason for that is that you can get that sort of semicircular effect, and I'll show you a test shot of that later on. So you just put that back onto the lens. You don't get a full circle, it's just on the size due to the crop factor. Lens coatings on this are pretty dark, so it's not that easy to see on the inside. There's your aperture blades there. And it's also F2, which is quite fast really for a lens of this type. Just show you the rear of the lens now. Again, metal mount on this. When you are focusing, the elements do move backwards and forwards slightly. This is the ND1000 filter that was supplied. They've got some interesting coatings on that. It's quite easy to clean, but it's also pretty easy to smudge up due to the fact that it's quite small. So to fit that, what you need to do is put the lip part down and then just screw it onto the back of the lens. I am glad they've included this because it's gonna be pretty much impossible to use any kind of normal filter with such a wide angle of view. Don't know about the fish eyes thing. I think someone had a bad day at the factory. So apart from that little spelling mistake, quite nice build, it is quite front heavy though. And there's also a tendency for your fingers to move down near to that focus ring. You do get used to it though, just hold it a bit below the top lip and you won't accidentally knock that focus ring. We move on to some of the test shots now. And what I've done is just a simple scene here just to see what the sharpness is in the middle. And it's pretty good at f2. It does improve slightly when you stop the lens down to f2.8 and f4, but it's certainly for a usable wide open. Extreme corners, there is a bit of blurring at f2, but by the time you've stopped that down to f5.6, that's pretty much eliminated. Around about f5.6 is the optimum aperture. Very little difference with f8 to f5.6, and at f11, I found there's a bit of diffraction. Pretty good result though, wouldn't have a problem using this at f2 if I needed to, but f5.6, that's the ideal aperture if you're looking for that sharpness right across the frame. I thought I'd look at a few other areas and firstly go on to the flare. There is a bit, not unexpected for such a wide angle lens. Most of the time though, it wasn't too bad, so I didn't have too many complaints on that side of things. There is a little bit of purple fringing on the extreme corners. You can see here around the sign. If I move over to the other side, there's a little bit around that sign as well. Not too bad though on the purple fringing, fairly easy to remove that. With a fisheye lens, you're gonna have quite a bit of distortion, but it does vary considerably depending on how you use the lens. As soon as I start to point the camera down though, you can see that effect of the distortion increase greatly. And when it's pointed down a lot, that will really exaggerate the perspective the obvious downside with keeping the camera level is your horizon is always going to be in the middle and you might not always want that. So generally what I would suggest is do embrace the distortion aspect of the lens and get that sort of unique perspective. Quick test now without using the filter you can see my shutter speed is 60 of a second f11. It's quite late in the evening and I was getting a shutter speed around 13 seconds with the ND1000 filter. That's a bit under the 10 stops though, not by much. Close focus distance, 12 and a half centimeters, so you can blur at the background without too much trouble. Not necessarily a lens that you're gonna be getting for that effect, but if you move in close, you can get some decent blur out on the background. 
Here's a shot showing you with the lens hood with the middle part taken out so you get the circular effect around the side. You do see a bit of purple fringing around the edges. I wouldn't really use this much myself, but it is an option for you. Here's a quick video clip that I'm taking walking along the town and I've managed to get shutter speed at f11 of a 60th of a second. In bright light, you are going to have problems though. I do believe there is another filter that you can get for this, which isn't as strong as the ND1000, so that might be worth looking at if you do a lot of video. Otherwise, you're going to have really fast shutter speeds, which could cause you problems for movement. If you're in low light, of course, that's not going to be a problem for you. It is an interesting lens. I did have some fun using this. It isn't what I would call a lens that I would use every day. It wouldn't be one that I'd use even every week, but it does give you an interesting look and perspective on things. It's very different from a normal lens because you've such a wide angle of view. And depending on how you're using the lens, you can really exaggerate the perspective and use that distortion as a sort of creative tool. Because it's an F2, it could be useful for things like astrophotography. If you're into interior photography, I'd probably be looking at a sort of normal ultra wide angle lens. So with that in mind, if they came out with something like a 10 or 11 millimeter F2, that would be perhaps a better bet for that. Might be worth having one in the bag though. It really depends on how often you're going to use it and what sort of photography you are into. Hopefully that video gave you an idea of what you can expect with this. If you have any questions or any thoughts or any other suggestions, do drop a comment below and thanks for watching.